Okay, with the cyclone, something else about cutting the keys of the cyclone. Um, okay, I mean, you can put them in this way, you can put them in that way, you can put them like this, or this way. Um, so, put them in this way. If, I don't know if you can see inside there, there's a little ridge, a little tiny ridge. Okay, don't use that's the let's see one bit of I don't know if it's going to focus. I'm trying to see, there's a little tiny ridge in there. So, the key effectively. Sit in that ridge. That's there. Okay. That's how it sits in there. So let's put you back. Make sure I've got it all lined up right. I've got the vice in the way there. Of course. Yeah, I think it's about right. So. Put the original key in. Now, you can, what you've got to remember is the angle, is this because it goes like this as it comes up. So, you can't necessarily put this like a square with this. As you're saying that, you can. Some people tilt it down so when it comes up to the cut, so you literally go on both shoulders. This jaw's just stuck. I'm going to use the mortise one for a bit. closer you can see it's in the little ridge that's there okay so I did it up slightly just a fraction it will slide it will slide in there so you push it all the way to the shoulder and the same with this one now when you push it up look at how the angle of the blade is going to hit it Okay, so a lot of people when they cut on these, they tilt them down slightly. So that's if you look at it now, tilt it down slightly. It's giving you more of a square cut. <coughs> Obviously, do the same with both keys. So let me just put this back. Put this back in. Both keys down to the shoulder. I'll just check this one. I've got them both tilting down slightly, so when I cut them, okay, there we go. The handle, this handle here, engages. This is the mortise. That's how I push it in. This is the rim. Okay, put it out. I will start from the shoulder, working across. I'm doing a tiny bit of time. And this is the correct way of holding it, but to be honest with you, I hold it like this. Don't need a lot of pressure. Don't really like uh, pushing it. Mine's just like finger touch. I'm tend to look at this one as opposed to this one. Look, I do glance at the kiln that's been cut, but most of the time I'm staying at this one making sure I trace it, trace around it properly. 
and tight. Tight to the corners. Give me a nice key. So you can see it is a bit ski sloped going up the top so I mean if, if you wanted you could change the angle of it so if it's ski sloped that way then you can make the key more upright of course I'm going to do the same with this one Yeah, you can see it's it's actually got quite a nice finish to it now. I don't know if you can see that. So from there you should go on the key horse. And I'll tell you what, let me get the key for us. See if I can set this up. So, horse. Go back to see, make sure I'm looking at the vice. This thing's going to fall over. There's a steel key, there's a steel key you should be finding it, well again you can finish the key off by giving it a, a polish. Some people use a, an emery cloth just to give it a nice polish. Okay, um, if you've got steel keys you should be filing down if it's got a bad weld on it and from there you can just you want to get it back on the machine there's the key cut give it a try lovely lovely that is how you use this machine um, the other thing I could show you is Again, another one. Uh, let's see if I can get. It. Let's see what? Let me just stop this and I'll do another another angle. Right, I'm going to do another view. Top view from cutting the key. Good. Okay. In the little grooves, just goes in there. Nicely sits in there. Push it in. So this one. Push it in, 
Start your engines. Ground the finish. Sharp. There's a little bit of a tiny bit of a slope on that. It'll still work though. Okay, just give it some of that. That's it, it's gone now. how you cut a key on a cyclone. Um, if you want to check your calibration, you do. I'll do the three key system. I think the calibration might be out in this. Get three blanks. Okay, three blanks. Why three blanks? Because blanks aren't always 100% right. But if you Put these in the same, clamp them up, and if you run this in, just touch them. It's just touching. So then that one, when you put this one in, do the same. Not touching. Hmm. Not touching. So you're very careful. So key banks are not accurate. So what I'll do is I'll put another key bank that just touches slightly. This one is needless. 
so I wonder whether this one's actually too high. So let's try another three. Probably slightly too high, which is what's mousy, which is what I normally do when I cut these. That's probably a bit too much. Effectively, these two are identical because they've both been taken off this one. So these two should be identical. Even if the machine's out, they will be identical to each other. That's why I use the three keys. So now you need to put this one back in. Put these two. Put them in. Obviously, haven't cleaned them out for a while. And that's it. Plus, this machine is absolutely ancient. See, so yeah, that's basically how to do it. Um, the same thing for calibration on this one. Three key system again on this one. But with the mortise keys, that's how you clamp them in.